point. So, <laughs> they may choose to stick themselves somehow to an object. I have yet to peel back the layers on that and really figure out why. Why, why would you choose a hairbrush other than, well, if you took it, I get to go along with you, right? Um, houses, uh, places where they spend a lot of time make more sense to me. And of course, people, you want to hang out with your people. Um, and so I think they, they, they hang out with those individuals, right? I don't think that they are attached to that person as much as they are choosing to follow that individual around. An attachment, again, they are kind of sinking their claws in. They are getting something in return. Think of it as almost like a parasite, right? They are getting something in return with a spirit who is basically attached to someone, um, a ghost, if you will, who's attached to someone um, that isn't an attachment. It's more likely that they're just trying to be with their people and they don't really understand that once you cross into the light, you can come and go as you please. You can keep tabs on your grandchildren. You can drop in on your uh, son-in-law's, you know, house and see what's going on, um, etc. I think this happens a lot more than um, we realize because I think, and this is just my personal opinion, I think that a lot of the world religions have not necessarily set people up for that next phase. We talk a lot about, oh, we'll go to heaven or we'll go to, you know, whatever is the next step in your belief system. Um, and it's all going to be, you know, wonderful, but they don't really teach the soul how to leave and who's coming to collect them. Right. Um, I know some institutions may be better at it than others, but there's a lot of fear. There's a lot of fear that surrounds dying and death. Um, and people, especially in the modern age are not equipped. And so they cross over and they're surprised to be there. They don't know what to do. Do I go with these people? Like, especially if you don't recognize the family member, right? Maybe, maybe you don't have anybody over there yet. Unfortunately, um, you, that you knew, right? Um, their guides and their angels might not be somebody that they, they, they recognize right off the bat. Um, and so they are not sure if they should go with them or probably more likely is that um, they feel like if they cross over and go with their guides and their angels and their family who comes to get them, no one ever dies alone, it's probably more likely that they're afraid of missing out on the lives that they're leaving behind. They are maybe concerned that if I cross over, I can't come back and see um, my daughter or my grandchildren or my spouse or, or whatnot, right? Like if I cross over, I, I can't be part of that with them anymore. And while some of that is true because they have to move on, the other half is, again, they can go back and forth. You know, our loved ones are with us. They drop in. My grandmother drops in all the time. She is all up in my business, just like she was in life. Um, she will drop in and she wants to see what's going on. But, um, you know, once she's got her fill, then off she goes and so on and so forth. So why do they stick around in certain houses and certain or with certain people and with certain objects? I mean, it could be six of one way and half a dozen of the other, but that's pretty much what I think. I think that if they're not stuck there for one reason or the other, um, they choose to be there. And a lot of it is fear-based. They're afraid to cross over. They're afraid of that next step. They're not ready to take it. Um, and so that is often why you will find ghosts haunting a location um, versus, uh, you know, not. So I hope I made this clear. Uh, again, it's a very big conversation, so I'm trying to take it in bite-sized amounts, but let me know what you think. Hopefully, um, we can have more of this conversation uh, again, and we can answer these questions uh, even more succinctly, if this wasn't succinct enough.